So you finally made it to the end of the regular season. And there are t- and there were 16 teams that made it. So without further ado, let's just get to these teams because I don't have that much time. This was it. If there's one thing my sunburns are 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 they are they are hardcore heavy fighters. I will say that with with a proud heart. This was literally a, a whole terrorist attack on the entire league. Randy Moss and it once again gave us a fresh reminder of why he is the best motherfucker here. 40 touchdowns versus 10 picks, over 4,000 yards. Cruz with a 1,000 yard receiver. He's almost cracking 1,000. Fuge having a, having a nice season too and probably could have done more if he didn't get suspended. Tiny and Cal- Tiny and AFC dominating on the in the trenches and in and and and, and all around Frankie 264 being Frankie motherfucking 264 and that pat and I and that's not getting to probably someone that I didn't expect to to play good this season lock freaking 36 this was a guy that I thought oh probably you was just be there but this <coughs> beautiful season this was a season that literally established the whole thing that he's still uh, he's still one of the best to to play especially from the prime from the prime that he had seven interceptions at short well done, my good sir. The number one seed in the entire OFL. This is the type of stuff that gets me salivating. This is the type. This is Saxon Sunbirds football, baby. But of course, this is the playoffs, and of course, we all know that there's one thing I I, I ask: don't fuck up. The only thing that's stopping you are yourselves. You you make you show the dominance that that we've seen all year. Oh boy. No one in this league is safe. This could potentially be the year that we break the curse. Now let's do this. Because, good lord, it's time for a Saxon Victory Bowl Championship. Oh, you for telling me I forgot something. Well, yeah, I did with the Saxon part. And I was just mentioning the fact about... That Randy went ahead and, and had 20 rushing touchdowns this season. That went ahead and that broke pretty much the OFL record of most rushing touchdowns in the season. And it was also by a former Sunbird. And he did block for, for, for all that. Goodness, this season gonna, is going to do miracles on me if we, if we win it all. So, you stayed up here the entire season. I'm impressed. But then again, I'm not really. But then again, I am. It's a mixed, it's a mixed bag. AJ Reloaded went ahead and looked like the the all pro QB and award winner that we're used to seeing. Over forty five hundred yards, over sixty touchdowns, adding another five hundred on the ground, and five touchdowns. My goodness, this this Jocelyn team wasn't having any of it. Now that this is the playoffs. Same thing like I said with Saxon. I'll say it with you. The only thing that's stopping you are yourselves. So go make that push. 
because we're not because we're not gonna be hearing another excuse of oh what happened that I lost in the playoff game again. We're not having any of that. Good luck, Justin. And hopefully, and hopefully, I get to see you in the victory bowl. So, Radiance, you had a very interesting start to your season. You you literally got embarrassed by Dante Alvarado by throwing four picks in that game. Four picks. That is not a good... That is not MVP standards, Radiance. But to your credit, the Corn Spartans are a feisty team. And Radiance reinforced that again. Over 5,000 yards passing, 5603 to be exact. That's literally second in the entire OFL. Over 60 touchdowns. A very impressive season. This is this is a team that we know will be guaranteed a first round win. Does do people not remember ra the script with Radiance? Whenever he goes ahead and he plays in the first round. The dude's only lost like once. Theoretically when he's QB the full season. And that was literally versus the Jackrabbits. And that game was really was exciting to, to watch. You guys got potential to go far. Just do your thing and you'll be alright. I'm not surprised that you guys made it back. Like, I'm honestly not. This is literally last season's Victory Bowl roster. Minus X-Side. But replacing X-Side is... Is G-Post and... What? What was it? Ah, gimme! Another former Sunbird. And hey, y'all y'all really pretty much... Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, you guys pretty much are wondering, how didn't we get the number one seed? Well, the answer was if Weekno went ahead and and then pretty much throw that toss up that early, you probably would have the number one seed by now. Or probably would still have it. But let's face it. Even even though the playoffs aren't going to run through you, you guys are still pretty much the juggernaut that everyone wants to eliminate immediately. I mean, let's face it. A former MVP as your quarterback? A wide receiving core that oozes with potential? The only, the only re way that's... Like I said, with the, with the with the first two teams, only te team that's stopping you, it's yourselves. If you got you go ahead and you and you do what you what you do, this this team is literally going to be giving people trauma in the playoffs. I and I don't I don't know what what there is to say, bro. Besides that, oh man, this season is just going to be really interesting. In one record, though, so I won't hate. But damn, you guys were a very surprising team that entering this little thing. This was was this what forty two's first season at QB. I keep forgetting that, but for some reason he looked like. Freaking ejected at quarterback. I'm not saying that because he's he was literally dressing up as uh, that was that's that was already weird in itself, but just quite literally, this dude was literally just looking like a freaking MVP player. Mo he had the most carries in the league, yes, with 638 seven yards and eight touchdowns, but. The way he was throwing the rock, 
you could have sworn that was ejected on and all or something because 51 touchdowns to seven picks is nothing to scoff at with over 4,700 yards. In addition, a tier one finish. This was a team that really blew expectations this season. And as the, as the season got along, you guys just got better. Loading up with talent. Even nabbing Pope from the Punishers. I don't know... I don't know what else to say. What, what else to say about this team? But you guys are awfully scary looking coming into the playoffs, and I hate it. Just hope if you if you guys go ahead and make it far. Good lord, the war at the border is actually going to be some of the best battles ever played. So good luck. And hopefully, you guys can actually make it far. This is another team that pretty much that I'm gonna be, that have a, a bit of a natural bias for. And but this time it's instead of me being the DFO of the team, I'm actually on this team. Anyways. This was Sac this was Saxon as we knew it. I, but the season that you guys had was a whole bunch of turbulence. This team literally went ahead and started off the season literally just losing games left and right. You did have that one win versus the puns, yes, but the entire season, you just went downhill. Getting destroyed by by teams that you sh that you should have gone ahead and beaten. Lose it. Depatron leaving the team. Cursa came in. Cursa didn't really last long, anyways. So now, what did Hardscope do? Well, luckily for him, a certain uh, there's. A, a certain threat that always lurks the shadows. And after his disappearance last season, he made, he made his return when a team needed him. Young Santo freaking rally, motherfucker. This dude went ahead and made his return and pretty much had the, enti the entire t league tweaking. 24 touchdowns against two picks in four games. This is the young rally that we're used to seeing. This, he, he played like a literal monster. The, the same that, that, that what we've seen all, all these times. If I'm going to be for real, if FSC had rally sooner... With the with the season that he's had, in, since, since he's returned, they could have they could they could have been a lot higher and could very well be content, heavy freaking contenders. But hey, it's good that you guys got a QB now, than not having a QB at all. But of course. That's that's it's also worth saying that I that there's always my expectation. And that's all and that's simple. Play to your strengths. Play smarter. Like I said with all, with mo, with most of the other teams earlier, only team that's stopping you from going far is you. It's time to bring a fourth championship back to to Saxon. Wait, what? It's time to bring a third championship back to Pensacola. And man, I think that that's going to be the best present you can get Mac ATL and Caravello. <coughs> You'll be seeing a lot of chaos in, in this playoffs. 
And I'm not saying that literally. Ha ha. Ha ha Yeah. I'm not great with jokes. You guys were a weird batch this, this time around. And granted, this seat. I'm not trying to go ahead and laugh at you guys or anything like that. Because you guys play like played really good football. A seven and two record isn't anything to scoff at. But this was a season where we had an uh, that, that the most unlikely best QB in the entire o OFL happened to be three X Trems. Trems. A, a guy that's known more for running than he is passing. Well, damn. He played really good this season. And I'll say it really well. He played really freaking good. If, if there was an MVP season to go ahead and talk about, it's this one. Breaking the, the single season passing yardage record. The number one offense team in the entire OFL. Divine Derek putting up numbers that that we haven't seen from him at all. This looks like this was a different team this entire this entire year. And the way that they were moving just Oh my god. This team just just feels different. You guys will go ahead and you guys will see a home playoff game. Luck, luck, lucky you. However, there's no, but there's no way you go ahead and you suffer the, the same fate as last season's Huskies and fall in round one, right? That's, that's all I ask. You're gonna you're gonna go ahead and win round one, right? All we needed was a full season of Bailey to go ahead and do his thing, and it's not surprising that, well, he did his thing. The Ra the Warriors went ahead and played some pretty damn good football, going ahead and. And getting wins left and right versus teams that they were expected to beat, and keeping it close with 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 teams that that they would fall to. The Warriors were just the pure definition of just of of cold blooded. What I mean by that? Why just cold blooded killers that just do their thing. And Bailey's re Bailey's return with the full season went ahead and, and did wonders. Fifty-five touchdowns versus seven picks is, isn't isn't anything to scoff at. But he looked like the quarterback that we're used to seeing. This was a this was a guy that won MVP a while back, no? With the season he's had, he's had a nice bid to claim his third MVP. A very, a very well-tuned season to get the Warriors back to the playoffs for the first time since the Chaos Topia season. Now, is the House of Warriors restored, or is this a, a figment of, of imagination? Let's assume the the former rather than the latter, please. The Toros, oh, there are plenty of things I, I can say about this team, but man, you guys were you're, you guys were were chaos this entire this entire season. This leader, if there was one thing I I I, sh I didn't expect to see, I didn't expect to go ahead and see Reece Barkle to have the season that he had. 
49 touchdowns isn't something to scoff at, but only on just three picks? The Toros went ahead and were easily very efficient. And it really showed. And I don't know why, but the but the one time that Danny did not didn't even show up to the game, they let Maxi Bands QB and Maxi Bands play like he like he belonged. Six hundred and seven yards, seven touchdowns and one picked. This was pretty much the type of production that I don't that if I'm the Toros, I ain't gonna even gonna even complain about it. Because this was a season that I expect y'all to go ahead and, and be in contention, but the way y'all stayed in contention though, impressive. Ve most impressive. Just do your thing in the playoffs and you should be fine. Unfortunately you'll probably be on the road a lot, but Hey, it is what it is. There's no. Just, just hope. Hopefully, if we get we get a treat and we see a true matchup of the Warriors versus the Toros, that would be something nice to see. Pemberley, I have, you. You guys are the weirdest team this entire year. And I mean this just with the full with the full thing. I mean, look. This season started off with Pope at QB. And then you got rid of Pope in exchange for Draco. Now get me wrong. Don't get me wrong though. Pope Pope played pretty much as expected it and and kept the puns pretty much in, within the dance, but not seeing eye to eye with him, I thought would have killed this team. However, I was very wrong. Because Traco t fully taken over really was really was something I didn't see coming. Yes, it, we did get, get to see the Will Clutch experience, and that didn't really age well. But when Traco fully take to, took over, bro, it looked like he was back in his in his heyday again. This was this was literally the type of things that literally just causes a a, a lot of a lot of chaos, a lot of dysfunction. You guys did well enough to go ahead and, and make it through. A, not, a nice season from Cam also went ahead and also did some wonders too. Over a thousand yards, forty six catches, eighteen touchdowns. That's pretty goddamn impressive. It, if you if you ask me, I don't really have that much expectations for y'all, but if y'all get a a, a playoff win, though, that would be ballistic. Good luck, though. I'm rooting for you. Literally before the season, Fareed went ahead and thought this team was going to be a chum team because of no stability at quarterback. And don't get me wrong, that was right to have concern back at that moment. <coughs> Even there was a time that even I wasn't sure who the hell that the Phoenix were gonna have at QB. But once they went ahead and they got settled in, I we all wish that they continue to have the cycle because let's just say Colder's pretty damn good. At just to, just putting it nicely. He put he put up a monster season again. Fifty three touchdowns, forty seven hundred yards. Looking at a team that pretty much was 
felt like in t- that was in tier four into tier two. You guys played some really dang good football. And, and I think and that should honestly go ahead and and I should there's your nice congratulations. All I have to say now is simple. What more do you got? Show us what you're made of. And good luck. Empire State was a team that I did not have my radar either. Don't get me wrong. XX2 went ahead and had a nice debut season last last year. And I should have and I should have not underestimated that. But man, the season he's had this season, it felt it felt different. This was the first season I remember the Sentinels being successful without Rally at all. Don't get me wrong, Anti Dio had that nice had that nice 500 season, but he but he eventually went ahead and landed out and eliminated at the in the plan. But this this felt for real. Phil Bonder taking over this team really went ahead and just and made, and made some changes, and hiring X as as this QB one. Really went ahead and paid off. The Sentinels look like, look like a clear cut play, playoff contender, and could and if they and if they can continue their winning ways, this team could potentially be in the push for a victory bowl. All I have to ask is simply put, just keep everyone in line. You guys went ahead and I've uh, worked against its advantages before. So good luck to you. You you sons of bitches went ahead and, and fucking did it. I don't know how, but you guys did it. This was a this was a spot that I didn't expect y'all to go ahead and, and pull off, but you went ahead, walked into Buffalo, New York. And pretty much caused more heartbreak than what the Bills went ahead and give and give the fans. And I just hate to say that, but unfortunately, we cannot under we've we've been forced to underestimate the power of the bullshit of one Kelvin Five. And he did it again. That playing performance, especially in the fourth quarter. Oh. God, that is something to go ahead and and just worth noting. But now that you went ahead and you got here, what are you prepared to do? This is a you have a very good roster of experience of experienced vets, healable. Quan, Cal, Prowling. This was a team that really blew expectations. Even Ghost played well this season, too. But as always, the question looms is simple. Are they capable of making a deep push? If, if they are, this could be pretty much healable's b- best campaign since season 23 if we're being for real but good luck to y'all I don't know what y'all, how y'all do but good luck I really I think I've gone to a point of this video that I've actually really just underestimated just some of these teams in general especially just the talent that, that they have it's just worth noting some of the some of the talent that's that's gonna be in the playoffs. Take off Travis with the Spartans. Six pack Vatos and the Sentinels. Di- 
Died of Vine. And of course, Lillard, Ryuo, Cruz, Hardscope, Marty. Marty Guapped Up was unfortunately eliminated, but eh. Navarone. Radiance, Trems, Randy, Cabby, Frankie. Good lord, this, this is going to be an interesting playoffs. But of course, I mentioned the first thirteen teams already. Let's get let's meet the final let's meet the final three. I don't know what to tell to, what to say about the this team. I mean the, the Raiders are a pretty good team, don't get me wrong, but you guys literally pretty much had to figure it out in a way. I mean, this season, I mean, you start, you got started off bipolar as hell. Lucky, lucky you, you got it to, together for a bit. Then went bipolar again. And then in the final game, in the final game of the regular season, you lost. And then Keybinder decided that he was done and rage quit the server. So. Let's fourth leads you in the play in. Luckily for you, this was pretty much a, a pretty much a, a bit of a bye week. And luckily for Mal Shifts, he did just enough to go ahead and and squ squeak past what whatever. The hell that that we that we called the Olympia Sky Kings. I'm not even gonna go ahead and comment what I saw, but yeah, that's it's pretty much an end of an era. But who knows? You did go ahead and you did do, do one thing for me though, and that was. You pretty much beat the the curse allegations, and with it, you went ahead and you made it back. Good, good shit. I don't expect anything else from you guys. You guys already went ahead and did what what I asked, so go ahead and do something. If you do somehow win a playoff game. I will go ahead and I'll be surprised. I will congratulate you guys though. LOH. So core blocks. Y'all went ahead and had yourself a nice. I'm talking nice. <coughs> you had yourself a nice time, bro. Arguably. The, num the number three. The number three pa passer in terms of yardage in the OFL. A guy who lit up who lit up the air. And y'all went ahead and, and did j just enough to go ahead and, and make it pass. Dante's shown that he's had a clutch in us of late. And, and with that, he's being rewarded pretty much his first ever playoff trip. At QB. It's funny though. Blaine Baker really hasn't had to do do much at head coach. And already he's seen more playoff appearances than Mason has triumph bull wins. Which is pretty crazy. But then again, I ain't going hate. It was really impressive, I'll 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 say that. So overall, good luck though, because, well, this season just felt a bit b buck wild. You guys are probably the luckiest sons of bitches of all time. 
I mean the straight up Oklahoma City. You guys sh shouldn't even be here. But welcome back. We didn't we didn't really miss you anyways. You went ahead. This season was was rocket to the point that you went from that you went from having Randy the freaking Depatron and then Depatron and Randy and the whole reason Depatron showed up was because Randy got suspended. Luckily, he's back for the playoffs, so that's not an issue. But then when Depatron gets suspended, who do you who who do you look to? Why, good old Avery. Avery, for some reason, showed why he was very like he was so elite. In the OCFA. 29 touchdowns against 5 picks. It's pretty impressive. And I fully expected Avery to go ahead and QB versus Miami. But lo and behold. Randy comes back. And he shocks the Bolts. Kind of fitting. But yeah. I'm really cool with this team. Except like 2 people. One being, one being Joski. Who if you know. You know. And the other one being the super weird Mason. The Eli Apple of, of corners in the OFL. If, he, if Mason sells you again, call me. I'll go ahead and I'll make a, make a congratulations video just for him. Now we have finally reached the playoffs. And with that, the matchups are set. I've already put one ahead and I've listed pretty much what I think about these matchups in Austin Deer Chaosu. Discord.gg slash OFL if you want to go in and join and all that. But of course, let's just go ahead and let's, let's just before we do anything, let's go ahead and let's look at the matchups. Punisher versus versus Saxon. Snowhawks versus Jackrabbits. Phoenix versus Spartans. Twisters versus Ducks. Rattlers versus Aztecs, Toros versus FFC, Sentinels versus Huskies, and then the Raiders taking on the Warriors. What do you think will happen? Let me know. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Toodaloo!